What year is it? Whoa, what? <gasps> 12 May Thursday. What year? No. What year is it? So the remake of The Hills Have Eyes came out back in 2006, which means it's been 15 years since that has come out. So I wanted to see if it holds up or not. Now, unlike other films, I have seen the original and it's good. I like it. So I don't remember seeing this remake. So I was really intrigued, really like excited. But like, what did they do differently? And it kind of is a shot to shot remake. Like there's some aspects, two minutes longer or something like that. They add new scenes to it. And I don't know if it was necessary, but in the end, I think overall it feels the same as the original. It's good. I don't think by much. The added scenes weren't necessary. So I'm like, I guess it's much for batters. He goes around killing, like, I think most of the people there. It's like, damn, all right. He goes in a little, like, small, like, new town. Like, all right, I guess they were more for like, the badass role, even though throughout the film, he really just kind of a dick. I got that feeling from the beginning where he's, like, checking out the little girl who's, like, the sister of his wife and all that stuff. Father doesn't really like him, you know, stuff like that. I was like, oh, all right, some, you know, typical family drama stuff. And oh, yeah, I should probably introduce the characters, which I remember only Bobby, Brenda, the little sister, the son in law, the older sister, and then the two parents. I'll I don't even know two of their names. Forgive me for that. But the, the son-in-law, you guys know who I'm talking about. I talk about the son-in-law. But yeah, they're going alongside, I think, New Mexico. It's a change. They're going to New Mexico to celebrate like their parents' 50th anniversary, I believe. But then they take a shortcut told by this guy at the gas station. They go there. There's people watching them. The car breaks down. The son-in-law and father go separate to go get some items or whatnot. There are two dogs. One of them goes away, gets gutted. The other one is pretty silent, pretty smart. You know, there's one dog that's like irrational and super impulsive and aggressive. One just like, sit back, be kind of, I guess, strategic and just uses a smartness and then the son goes finding that dog being good and it falls back and it's at this point where i was like oh no they really is gonna do a recreation like of the original i don't like that you know i really i just i'm not a big fan of that because what's the point of doing a remake if you're not gonna change anything significant you keep the core elements people being stuck in the middle of nowhere people watching from the hills but then the way it goes it's like all right we're just additional scenes of the son-in-law fighting that crater scene a bunch of cars and him getting additional scenes of going to new towns or whatnot that's it it's like oh no this is not starting off great and then it goes dark and someone comes back the father actually he gets a much quicker gas station kind of just immediately dies there's a prolonged scene in the original but he just immediately dies like oh okay i guess one thing i work for is, is the gore i was like well if you're gonna change one thing make it at least more bloody and yes they do and most of the kills are, are pretty damn good then brenda the older sister the mother and bobby stay at the rv bobby comes back all like crying and it's a scene like he wants to tell them but he doesn't want to scare off his family so he just keeps quiet about one of the dogs being gutted and killed bunch of weird like red herrings jump scares there's like a couple of jump I'm scared. Bobby comes back with a bunch of tools, tells him that there's a crater, tells him there's a dead end, lying the old man dead lie. And then again, Bobby's just freaking the hell out, decides to actually, you know, tell them, like, hey, when our dog got killed, everyone starts worrying, panicking. The father isn't coming back. It's like super late now, like 11 p.m., midnight or whatever. And then they get attacked. Now, I will say, people here do look a lot more scary. which makes sense because of new like could actually look scary and within this rv scene there is one super like uncomfortable breastfeeding scene and it's like they're really going for it super uncomfortable just kind of awkward one of the mutated people kill the mother and the older sister also at the same time they hang their father on a tree burning him now they do use cg which i don't get like they should have just like done this practically but for some reason this was a creative choice or an executive choice but they said a new cg fire on the father and it just took me out of it just for a bit just being like god damn it you could have just done this practically but either way he gets burned a lot and he hears screaming from the rv mother and older sister dies one thing i do like that the son law because of his laid back nature he feels responsible for this because he's always like he's that one person was like, eh, that's just an always in the wood. Don't worry about it. He's super laid back. That results in his wife dying, mother in law dying. And so, this is his time to step up, basically. And I do like that, right? It's like, okay, this is time to step up and take, I guess, responsibility, try to brush everything off. This is his time to be like, all right, time to get shit done. The other dog, I actually don't know their name. Like, I think Beast or something like that. Either way, other dog, the hero grips one of the mutated people's arms off, gets the radio, and they listen to people talking. Son in law takes his dog with them to the nuke town, while Brenda and Bobby stay at the RV to devise a plan to blow up the RV, and whoever mutated person comes. And like I said earlier before, everything feels kind of prolonged for not really no reason. I don't know why there was a prolonged scene of, again, son-in-law doing all that stuff, looking around. That wasn't really needed, but I guess it led to the whole like climax finale of him fighting big guy, right? The big mutated person, which is scary looking. But then he also gets that scene, he like chokes him to his neck, sticks something to his neck. That's <laughs> 
Oh, it's really awesome. And if you're gonna see that wheelchair, like mutated person by that dog, he tells him the whole position part of being like the government did this, you people did this to us, and this whole town and everything. He's got like a big ass head. It's like, god damn, shouldn't he die from this? Like, god damn, get that he's mutated, but that's a big brain right there. And then one of the mutated little girls who wants to save the baby, she wants to be on humanity side. So she takes the baby. Before we even get to that, Brenda and Bobby get rid of that one mutant. And then we get the son in law fighting against one more mutant. You know, he beats him up, supposedly that he killed him, but obviously he didn't. And then the little girl, little mutated girl, decides to be ultimate sacrifice kill herself her i guess a brother her mutated brother saving the sunlight and the baby all of them reunite the only survivors are bobby burn the sunlight and the dog and the baby whose name is catherine i believe whatever little baby survives and that's how the movie is or at least i thought and it pans out to binoculars implying there's gonna be a sequel which there is and another mutated person watching which don't really like that but that's how it ended so this remake is good i do like this remake it doesn't do anything different in terms of from the original material aside from a lot more gorier aesthetics it's essentially the same story same movie which i don't like but it's a good remake it's gonna be telling good, a good reimagining and i do like it mainly because of the gore so in the end the hills have eyes 2006 remake is good i like it it's just good though it's not going to like wow you or anything it's just good so that's it for me this has been the road so far thank you for watching.